So the so we are on the eleventh chapter, Canto One, Lord's Lord Krishna's entrance into Dwarka, and the text for today is four, five, and six, Prabhuji. So uh, shall we continue the usual way? Please. Thank you. <laughs> Bless you, Prabhuji. Are you Thank not well? Oh no, I'm good. Just sneezing. Oh. Thank you. It's an allergy, probably. I'm allergic to the devotees because I'm such an offensive fallen soul. Please ah. <laughs> You can't be allergic to devotees, Prabhuji. You attract devotees. You can't be allergic at all. Okay. Shashwin, are you able to uh, start with uh, Shrima, um, uh, reading of the text 4, 5, and 6 and then doing the uh, Manglacharan? Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayet Nashta Prayeshwa Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishriki Hare Krishna Tatro Panita Balayo Ravirribam Ivadrita Admaramam Purna Kamam Nijala Bina Nityada Pritjupala Mukha Prochur Harsagad Gaddaya Gira Pitatram Sarva Suhridam Avitatram Ivarbaka Hare Krishna Natas Natas Mati Natas Adangri Pankajam Virincha Vairincha Surendra Vanditam Parayanam sin mam ihe chatam param nayatra kala pravavit para prabhu Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, let's start with the Mangla channel. Om Hare Krishna. Om Agnana Timirandarsya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadanti Swapadantikam Vandeyam Shri Gurun Shri Utapadagamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sakrajadam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Satvaidam Swavadudam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Jaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsya He Krishna Karuna Sindho 
दीन बंधो जगत पते को शको बिका कांत राधा कांत नमोष्टुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाजकूब्य कृपा सिंधूब पति पावनी वैष्णवीभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअत्वैत गाथार श्रीवासादि गौरवक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा Thank you very much, Ashwin, for reciting the uh, text four, five, and six, and the Mangla Charan. Thank you very much. So now, uh, Prabhuji Danvat Pranam, um, we will now read the translation and purport of uh, uh, four, five, and six, and then hand over to you. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Please. Hare Krishna, devotees. Is there anybody who could read? The, the translation word to word translation and purport of text 4 and 5 any volunteers hari krishna varaj kishore mata ji are you able to do that for us uh, hari krishna yes i can okay so uh, we are on canto 1 chapter 11 text 4 and 5 are combined So, if we can start with the word-to-word -word translation and purport, please. Okay. Tatra thereupon, Upanita having offered Balaya presentations, Rave up to the sun, Deepam lamp, Eva like, Adrata being evaluated, Atma aramum unto the self-sufficient, Purna kamam. Fully satisfied, Nijala Bena by his by his own potencies, Nitya Da, one who supplies incessantly, Priti affection, Utful Mukha, cheerful faces, Prochu said, Harsha gladdened, Gad Gadaya ecstatic, Gira speechless, Pitram unto the father, Sarva. All suhurdam friends, avitra avitaram, the the guardian Eva like, our bhakta boards. Translation: The citizens arrived before the Lord with their respective presentations, offering them to the fully satisfied and self-sufficient one, who by his own potency incessantly supplies others. these presentations are like the offering of a lamp to a sun to the sun yet the citizens began to speak in ecstatic language to receive the lord just as words welcome their guardian and father purport the supreme lord krishna is described here in as atmaram he is self sufficient and there is no need for him to speak seek happiness from anything beyond himself he is self sufficient because he his very transcendental existence is total bliss he is eternally existent he is all cognizant and all blissful therefore any presentation however valuable it may be is not needed by him but still because he is well wisher of one and all he accepts from everyone everything that is offered to him in pure devotional service it is not that he is in want for such things because the things are themselves generated from his energy the comparison is made here in that 
making offering to the Lord is something like offering a lamp in the worship of the sun god. Anything fiery and illuminating is but an emanation of the energy of the, of the sun. And yet to worship the sun, it is necessary to offer him a lamp. In the worship of the sun, there is some sort of demand made by the worshiper. But in the case of devotional service to the Lord, there is no question of demand from either side. It is all a sign of pure love and affection between the Lord and the devotee. The Lord is the supreme father of all living beings. And therefore, those who are conscious of this vital relation with God can make philalai demands from the father and the father is pleased to supply the demands of such obedient sons without bargaining. The Lord is just like a desire tree and from him everyone can have everything by the causeless mercy of the Lord. As a supreme father, the Lord, however, does not supply to the pure devotees what is considered to be a barrier to the discharge of devotional service. Those who are engaged in the devotional service of the Lord can rise to the position of unalloyed devotional service by his transcendental attraction. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Mataji, for reading the text four and five. Uh, do we have a volunteer to read text six, translation and purport? Anybody would like to do that? Okay, I can do it. Uh, text six, chapter, uh, Canto one, chapter 11, text six. Natha bowed down. Sma, we have done so. Te, on to you. Natha, O oh Lord, Sada, always, Angri, Pankajam, the lotus feet, Virincha, Brahma, the first living being, Varincha, son of Brahma, like Sanaka and Sanatana, Surayendra, Indra, the king of, of heaven, Vanditam, Worshipped by Parayanam, the Supreme, Shimam, welfare, Iha, in this life, Ichatam, one who so desires, Param, the highest, Na, never, Yatra, wherein, Kala, inevitable time, Prabhavet can exert its influence. Para, transcendental, Prabhuha, the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> Prabhu, translation. The citizen said, O Lord, you are worshipped by all demigods like Brahma, the four sanas, and even the king of heaven. You are the ultimate rest for those who are really aspiring to achieve the highest benefit of life. You are the supreme transcendental Lord, an inevitable time cannot exert its influence upon you. The Supreme Lord is Sri Krishna, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Samhita, and other authorized Vedic literatures. No one is equal to or greater than him, and that is the verdict of all scriptures. The influence of time and space is exerted upon the dependent living entities who are all parts and parcel of the Lord. The living entities are predominated Brahman, whereas the Supreme Lord is the predominating Absolute. As soon as we forget this clear fact, we are at once in illusion, and thus we, put into th we are put into threefold miseries as one is put into dark, dense darkness. The clear consciousness of the cognizant living being is God consciousness in which one bows down unto him in all circumstances. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji Anvat Pranav. I now hand over to you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. All glories to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sri Prabhupada. 
So we're continuing with our study of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 11. And Lord Krishna is herein uh, re-entering Dwarka. So we may consider uh, how Lord Chaitanya has instructed that the entire purpose of all the Vedic scriptures uh, is devotional service. Is specifically uh, understanding our relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, actually engaging in the activities of that relationship, and uh, Prayojana, attaining the ultimate goal of love of God and freedom from the cycle of birth and death. So, Sambandha. Abhideya Pryojana. You know, Sambandha means the, uh, the nature of our identities, the nature of ourselves, and the activities of devotion to Krishna, and Pryojana, uh, the ultimate goal. So there are many, many teachings within the Vedic scriptures. There is worship of many different types of beings, demigods. And academically speaking, for someone who has, and very few people have, which is why there is often so much misunderstanding, because how can anyone have full understanding of anything without fully understanding it? If we have a book uh, teaching about something and we only read half the book, we, we don't have a complete understanding. Uh, most likely, we will have a partial understanding. So very few persons have studied all the Puranas, the Upanishads, uh, the Itihasas, uh, the Shruti, the Smriti. It's hundreds of thousands of verses. And that is why uh, or this is this is what we can explain. Sometimes we'll speak with someone who is familiar with uh, Hinduism or Vedic culture, and they advocate the worship of someone, Lord Shiva or Durga or Ganeshji, and or some other type of uh, yoga meditation. And uh, they uh, may have great enthusiasm, and sometimes they're very stubborn that this is, this is the perfection, that this is the, the final meaning of uh, Hinduism. Uh, of course, uh, if we're going to know what a book means, the best person to explain it is the author. There's no better person to explain it. It's the person who wrote it. You know, we have our opinion and someone else has their opinion, someone else has their opinion, and we are entitled to have our opinion. But we, we think uh, that a reasonable, pers a reasonable person would agree that the author is the one who's going to let us know what his purpose is in writing whatever they wrote. There's no way around that. How could you get around it? Uh, although sometimes we talk to people and they will insist they have a better idea than the author. It's uh, almost insanity or uh, over uh, emotionalism. They're just, they're not thinking straight. Uh, but many times, uh, we, you know, we, the people are reasonable and if we explain to them that, yes, I understand you've been worshiping Lord Shiva and your Durga and your family for many generations, and you've been doing this for a long time, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but who gave the information about the worship? Where do we get this word Shiva? Where do we get the word Durga? Where does the word Brahman come from? 
it is a powerful technique sometimes with speaking to people to get to the very essence of things that you're we're, we're saying all these words uh, pranayama and yoga and tapasya asanas and this yoga and that yoga but where did that word come from yoga and sometimes when you speak to someone they'll have a blank face they're like I don't know. I never thought about that, where it comes from. Many people don't think about it. They've learned these things somewhere uh, from within their family or some local temple or something. Uh, not that it makes them uh, any less respectable or any less honorable or any less valuable as to human. But the fact is uh, not everyone studies very deeply anything. There are people who know how to cook, and then there are people who have spent years deeply studying the different techniques and the different flavors. And they have a comprehensive understanding. Just like in uh, universities, they have the uh, bachelor's, master's, and PhD level, PhD level degrees. And uh, one aspect of that is that the different levels depend upon the depth of understanding. So people have different depths of understanding. So we find out that Srita Vyasadeva is the ultimate uh, organizer and author, the source of all Vedic information. That's explained in the Vedas themselves, it's not just our opinion. And he explained that the purpose of everything that I've uh, given, all of this divine wisdom, is this a sambanda abhide priyojan. This is, uh, he has stated as such uh, in different places. Devotional service. And here, so therefore, this Srimad Bhagavatam, which he says is his final, last summary of everything that he gave. Uh, at the end of every chapter of uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, in Sanskrit is uh, Brahma Sutram Basyam. Uh, where Srila Vyasadeva says that this Purana, this particular Purana, Bhagavad Purana, uh, it is the summary of everything. So many people don't know that, and we won't expect many people to know that, uh, but they can be informed, and if they're reasonable, they will at least, uh, oh, I, I didn't know that. Oh, really? Yes, really. Yes. So if you want to understand uh, everything, uh, uh, the final, then we study this Bhagavad Purana. That is why we focus, you know, people ask you, Hare Krishnas, why you only read Bhagavad Gita, you only read the Bhagavad Purana, a few other books. Because the author has let us know that there's, there's no deeper, more comprehensive text. This is the uh, beyond PhD level. This is the essence of the essence. So therefore, we find in Srimad Bhagavatam everything about bhakti. Because bhakti, as Srila Vyasadeva explains, all the acharyas have explained, as Srila Prabhupada has explained to us, uh, is who we are. And bhakti is not a religion that some people are into, some people... I'm into bhakti, someone else is into non into bhakti. That's true. But actually, our, our uh, technical, our technical uh, factual identity is bhakti. That is, uh, we hear that again and, and again. And today we're hearing in these purports, uh, in the second purport, or in the second uh, verse that we're studying, text six, uh, it is entirely focused on that, that the Supreme Lord is Sri Krishna, as confirmed in the Vedic literatures, no one is equal or greater than him. The influence of time is exerted upon the dependent living entities who are all parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. Uh, the living entities are the predominated Brahman, whereas the Supreme Lord is the predominating absolute. So this, this is why we, who are followers of Lord Chaitanya, who are 
members of this Hare Krishna movement. This is uh, why we have the focus that we have. It is not a belief system, actually. Some people believe it, some people don't. In that sense, it's a belief system. But whether we believe it or not, it's entirely true. You see, that, that's the difference. Uh, when I first met the devotees and I began studying the different uh, spiritual literatures, after about a month, I was speaking with my father. And uh, I said to him that, you know, as far as I understand, whether you and I like it or don't like it, whether you and I believe it or don't believe it, completely beyond all of whatever may be going on within our head, this is the absolute truth. You know, I was fortunate to, to be given some sense of that reality uh, that uh, although I may have different feelings about it, uh, beyond my feelings uh, was, was truth, which is something that we see uh, not un, uh, we see regularly in human society. There are well-known uh, ways of, of human acting. People say to another person, get a grip, get a grip of yourself, get a hold of yourself. What does that mean? It means that our, at, at that time, someone's emotions are getting, are getting a hold on them and they're not thinking straight. They're too afraid or too angry or too jealous, too tired. I'm too tired to think. How many times do we hear that? Someone says, I'm too tired to think about it. So we small human beings, unfortunately, our uh, clear thinking and rational thinking doesn't always work 100%. There are instances on a, on a battlefield, uh, it actually happens that uh, a soldier may become so stressed and panicked and afraid that they stand up and start running around yelling. <laughs> the enemy could attack them. And someone grabs them and says, snap out of it, get a hold of yourself. Because they're not acting according to the uh, reality of the situation uh, in the sense of acting properly. I'm, I, would, I might end up doing something like that. I mean, I, I sympathize. Uh, but I'm just making the point that uh, there are often many different influences upon our clear intelligence. And this is talked about in all genuine yoga texts. It's talked about in other religions, even. It's well known amongst people who are trying very hard to think straight, who are trying very hard to make decisions which are the best decisions, regardless of what's going on inside of our heart or our mind in terms of what we think about it or what we feel about it. <clears throat> That's a very good uh, ability to cultivate and it's the very beginning ability of yoga, to be able to have objectivity. That's what it's called, objectivity. That we can look at a situation uh, to the, as far as we can and to see it as it is. And we, could, we might say, I really don't like that. I don't want anything to do with it, but I admit that it's true. And sometimes people say that. Yes, I'm addicted to these drugs or sex or cigarettes. It's bad. I wish I could stop, but I can't. So that's, that's very honest. That's a, that's a good position, really, because you can make progress. But if because of uh, some reason, whatever it may be, someone refuses to acknowledge reality, then that's, that's a dangerous position. And the same is true when we speak about religion, or we speak about philosophy, we speak about Hinduism. Uh, Sometimes we ourselves, or sometimes other people, they'll hang on to their whatever thinking that they have, not for any logical or good reason. It's just um, some other reason. 
which is unfortunate. So here we are, we are uh, having another opportunity, a wonderful opportunity to uh, experience the spiritual world. This is the spiritual world. What is the kingdom of God like? What is the spiritual world like? This is what it's like uh, in the first text that here is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And all of these citizens are so happy to see him. He's been away for a very long time uh, in Hastinapur. Uh, and they are absorbed in a mood of loving affection. This is normal thinking. So in the purport, Sita Prabhupada explains how in the spiritual world, here in this world, we have many needs. And why do we have, we're needy. And for good reason, we have this material body and we need food for the body and we need clothes and we need money. Uh, and then there are emotional needs, there are so many needs, and we're not capable of supplying these things 100% ourselves. We have to get them from somewhere else. We are dependent. As uh, we're hearing it in the second verse, that we are dependent. We can't even breathe if this air was not already there. All the food that we eat, someone may say, well, the farmers provide it. I get it at the store. But ultimately, without seeds, even for people who are meat eaters, uh, you know, the cows and the lambs and the buffalo and the pigs, they eat uh, uh, food, plants. They eat plant food, which comes from seeds. The oats and the grass and sorghum and so many different things that the uh, animals eat. We would not be able to, to, to utilize them. We wouldn't be able to eat them unless they were able to eat. And that's because there are seeds and there's the sun and there is water. So we are so dependent. Sometimes there's no water, as we know. Uh, there's drought and the animals die and humans die. So we are so dependent uh, and we have needs. But in the spiritual world, in the kingdom of God, we don't have any needs. We, are, we don't have a material body that needs to eat, that needs clothes, so many things. We have no needs. And so it's easier, of course, uh, to have pure love. Uh, nevertheless, it is our nature to have pure love for Krishna, no matter what he gives or doesn't give. And Srila Prabhupada explains here that because he is the Supreme Father, uh, uh, it is not wrong and it's not unnatural to make demands sometimes, because where else are we going to get what we want? Uh, so we go to Krishna. And we ask, oh, I need this thing. If you could help me, I would be very appreciative. Like we would ask our father or anyone. And there's, uh, it's not sinful to do that. Uh, it is natural. At the same time, uh, we recognize that only having, just like our father, that wouldn't be fair. <laughs> and children do that too. You know? I'm guilty of it. In the past, we only speak to our parents when we need something, <laughs> right? We contact them and they say, what do you want? <laughs> Haven't heard from you in four months. You must want something. <laughs> uh, but even that, uh, the parents still care for the child and they don't hate the child. Uh, but of course, that, that's not pure love. If that's the only reason that we contact our parents. You know, love means that we contact them when we don't need anything. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? What's new? What's happening there? So that's love. There's no really necessary reason to do that, but it's out of affection. 
So we are encouraged to always have love for Krishna and to always uh, be in touch with him. Uh, whether we're feeling the need for something or not. Uh, and a good way to do that is to regularly give thanks. Not just calling our parents that I need a hundred pounds. I'm a little short this month. Uh, but we call up and say, thank you for loaning me the hundred pounds three months ago. I really appreciate it. And let me tell you what I'm doing lately. So we should, uh, it's, it's uh, no, we should, but it is encouraged. Uh, we can each in our own way, uh, make some plan. That, uh, that's why there is church on Sunday, uh, that at least once a week, people go to give thanks, to uh, come closer to God. Uh, so hopefully at least once a week, we can find time if not every day, uh, when things are quiet, before we go to sleep, uh, in the uh, solitude of our own mind, we can take 10 minutes, five minutes, and uh, speak to Krishna in our heart and say, thank you so much for this, for that, for this, for that. Uh, this is what I'm feeling. What should I do about this? It may feel a little odd, it may seem a little strange, uh, but the fact is he does hear us. And it is a good practice to practice uh, feeling his presence and to remember that he is present. There's different reasons for doing things. Sometimes when a teacher gives homework, it's not just to test the knowledge of the student, but the very uh, activity of studying and uh, with the idea of taking a test in the future helps to, to develop discipline. It helps to develop powers of concentration. It, there's different reasons why teachers give uh, activities to the students. And so the activity of, of uh, even if it feels like we're going through the motions uh, of, of trying to connect with Krishna uh, in our consciousness, there's different reasons for doing that, which will help us overall uh, in the course of our life. First and foremost, he will be very happy with us that we are at least trying, even if we only half believe it, uh, that we're trying to, uh, to make progress in bhakti, make progress in living our relationship. And Krishna says, Yeta mam prapadyante tums to taiva bhajam yaham, that as you surrender, so I reward you. Uh, Srila Prabhupada once gave a lecture, uh, and he was saying to the devotees that there are two words there is galagraha and there is vigraha. So they sound a little similar galagraha and uh, vigraha. So vigraha means the deity in the temple. And we are having uh, what he described as bhava or feeling, oh, here is Krishna. Krishna is present. And so let me keep everything very clean. Let me offer him nice flowers and jewelry. Uh, let me be on time, whatever I do, because he is present. And then, there is Galagraha. And so it was a, a little, a strong class. And he said, so Galagraha means my spiritual master has given me a big weight around my neck. Uh, here is this big uh, statue of stone. And uh, I, I'm not going to be very careful what flowers I offer and whether I'm on time, because it really doesn't matter. Uh, and I'll just offer Krishna any rubbish, rubbish flower. That's what he said. So Srila Prabhupada said that, uh, yes, Krishna will not mind, but your spiritual life will be over. It will be finished. Uh, because as we treat him, so he reciprocates. 
that it, oh, you don't think I'm actually present in the deity? You think that I'm, there's nothing more than stone here? Well, then for you, because that's what you want, I will be stone. And then on the other hand, if we uh, try to recognize the fact that he, he, he is spiritually present and we try and act that way, uh, then he will reciprocate in such a way that it confirms our faith. Krishna can do that, even up to the point of speaking to us. So, as we uh, try to uh, make progress in bhakti, uh, even uh, we don't even feel it. We may have heard that story where a, de a, a devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, why should I make my pranams, my prayers, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya? I don't feel it. And he said, do it anyway. And the feeling will come. And this is true about many things. Even cooking some recipe for cake. We don't know if the recipe is going to work. You have to do it. And then you see. And so this is true uh, all throughout life, that first faith, then we get the experience. But if you don't have the initial faith, you, it's very unlikely that you will get the confirmation. Uh, our practice of, of devotional service, of the rules and regulations of bhakti is meant to enable us to experience Krishna uh, as, a, as the reality that he is, just like these residents of Dwarka. He is standing there in front of them. They are talking to him. They are, he is talking to them. Uh, this is a, re, a normal uh, reality of existence. But in the, the purport of the, of the first two verses, verse five and six, uh, the, Sita Prabhupada makes the point that those who are engaged in devotional service can rise to the position of unalloyed devotion by Krishna's transcendental attraction, which is something we speak about regularly. Uh, that as we hear about him and meditate upon him, try and understand him, practicing the different rules and regulations, our attraction to Krishna will reawaken more and more and more. Um, so are there any questions or comments, some discussion? Krishna, are there any questions or comments? It would be nice to do a discussion. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, and what Today we have new, two new devotees. Hare Krishna. Uh, let me kindly acknowledge the presence of Gideon Chariot and Nixon Kipsang. Thank you, Prabhuji, for joining. If possible, you can switch on your video so we can have your darshan. But welcome to the group. We meet every day at the same link. So kindly, if possible, join us every day. Hare Krishna. We can uh, welcome them with the Hari Bowls. Hari Bowl. Hari Bowl. Hari Bowl. Hari Thank you very much. Uh, dear devotees, for welcoming the two devotees to the group. Are you going, Prabhu? You had a question. Kindly continue. Yeah, uh, I was just uh, wanting to share um, uh, something which I heard from uh, my wife uh, in another group in, in, in Bangalore. So they were discussing that Prabhupada would give uh, different instruction to different people. And uh, one, pers one person approached him saying that he liked to chant the Mahamantra but he was still addicted to drinking. He had a drinking habit, but uh, Prabhupada said, uh, uh, it's okay, I mean, continue to chant and then mentally offer 
offer the drink to krishna he will he will uh, i mean ultimately purify you so <laughs> and I, i mean he ultimately left after uh, you know purification so propat gave uh, you know different wonderful instructions to different people of course we cannot imitate it <laughs> so but uh, this this is one of the example i thought i would i would share because you were yeah. discussing some of the things yes yes probably yeah. i i don't know if it was that instance but in another similar instance he said you should think that krishna's the taste of the liquor so no matter what what we're doing actually uh not that we should think it is the highest level uh but then again we should not avoid doing it if that's where we're at that whatever we're doing we should try and appreciate that whatever it is uh it has been provided by god and i should appreciate him for it true thank you guru hari krishna even if someone's robbing robbing a bank oh such good idea thank you krishna <laughs> <laughs> yeah once uh, propad i think mentioned uh, uh a, a robber is also praying uh, that you know please give me a good booty today and uh, the householder is also praying uh, that please protect me from the the burglars so uh, propad uh, jokingly said god is confused whether to protect the protect the getting a headache yes <laughs> <laughs> so obviously i mean he uh, he honors uh, both prayers yeah and then the, each of them get the different result of their activity correct correct yeah very good thank you hare krishna something else anything hare krishna there hare krishna prabhu Uh, Dandavat Pranam, all glory to Shri Lopat. I joined few minutes late. I, uh, my apologies for it. But uh, you were telling um, that uh, do we know from where the word Shiva came? From where the word uh, Yoga came, right? So what were what were your inference about it, Prabhu? Like you were were you telling that it came from Vedas or it came from Krishna or Vyasa? Though he gave everything and finally he wrote Shri Mad Bhagavata. Uh, Hare Krishna. Yes. that's it that's it and it's not our opinion anyone can find it if they study the uh in the proper places uh and also on that note we were saying how so very few people have studied uh but there are some uh the, the leaders of the different sampradayas have studied everything a to z the six go swamis of vrindavan some of the other followers of lord chaitanya they are known for having studied all of it Lord Chaitanya himself, all of it. So, therefore, our having faith in their understanding, uh, uh, it is uh, it is not without good reason. And someone says, "Well, why are you following this pundit? Why are you following?" Well, because this one has studied so much more and can explain things uh, so much more comprehensively. Uh, sometimes students in colleges they 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 wait to have the class given by a certain professor it's true because that particular professor they is known for having a, a deeper understanding of things than than another professor okay wonderful clarification prabhu thank you so much hari krishna Hare Krishna. Any more comments or questions? Do you know more questions or comments for today? Prasannatma uh, Prabhu, is it possible for you to close the session then? in that case hari krishna okay maybe his internet is not supporting hari govind prabhu is it possible for you to end the session today yes mataji thank you thank you prabhu ji hari krishna your uh, classes are always uh, uh, giving practical tips on how to deal with the day to day life uh, and uh, how to deal with the shastras how to uh, you know um, uh, 
uh, interpret the shastric uh, evidences so it was always uh, nice to hear you uh, thank you prabhuji hare krishna i uh, request all the devotees to unmute and then chant hare krishna mahamantra once in glorification of his grace dinasharan prabhu ಭಾವನೆಭ್ಯ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Dina Sharan Prabhu ki jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhuji. Thank you so much for having me and allowing me to be of, of service. Hare Krishna. Glory to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Be well. Be happy. Thank you Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhuji. wonderful class you have a very good week as well prabhu ji thank, thank you, you so much hari so krishna hari krishna hari krishna govind prabhu hari govind prabhu yes mata ji hari krishna 